Okay, guys, today we're going to talk about the addition and subtraction of rational expressions. Okay, now this is going to work very similar to, of course, when you add fractions. Um, and first, we'll start off with the simple case that if you have the same denominator to begin with, right? So if you have the same denominator right away, and I'll just show this sort of with a uh, uh, with the addition example, since the subtraction works the same, if you already have the same denominator, you can just write their sum over that same denominator, right? So if you have one half plus three halves, you can add directly and you get four halves, which of course is just two. All right, and it works the same way uh, for rational expressions. You're essentially just combining like terms in the top if you have a subtraction problem, you wanna be careful to distribute your negative first um, and then writing over the same denominator, okay? Now, if you have unlike denominators, it's a little bit tricky at first to find your least common denominator, right? Like if you wanted to add three over four plus three over five, you need to find a common denominator first, right? So you need to multiply this by four, and this by five before you could add them, all right? And that's exactly what we need to do for rational expressions, all right? So first let's talk about how to find the LCD of a rational expression, okay? So in order to do that, you're gonna factor the denominator of each fraction completely, okay? Now what you're gonna do is each time you see a different factor, whether it's in parentheses or not, you're gonna write it down. Right um, now, as soon as you write it down, you're then going to look for the highest power for which that factor occurs in any of your denominators. All right, and that's what you're going to make your power. Now, any of the different factors, as well as the, well, with their highest powers, once they're multiplied together, that's your LCD. All right, so let's do an example of finding an LCD. Okay, so on part A here, we have y plus two over two x squared minus 18. We have four y over three x to the third plus nine x squared. We have y plus one over x minus three squared. They were kind enough to factor this one already, y minus one squared. Okay, so we wanna find the LCD. All right, so first we have to factor everything, all right? And of course, here we're leaving the numerators alone. We're just gonna leave this as y plus two, four y, and y plus one. Not that we could factor here anyway. Okay, now on the first one, we could take out a two and that would leave us with an x squared minus nine, but then we'll have a difference of two squares, so that's x plus three, x minus three. Okay, now for 3x squared plus 9x squared, it looks like I can take out a 3x squared and we'll be left with an x plus 3. Okay, and then it looks like in the last one we are already factored, so that's just x minus 3 squared times y minus 1 squared. Okay. Now, the second thing that we need to do is write down each factor that we see and then grab the highest power of it. So first, let's just look at our numerical terms first. So first, we just have a two and we have a three, right? Now, the number part, you're gonna treat the same as you would for regular fractions, right? So if you have two and three in your denominator, what's that least common denominator? Well, that's a six. All right, and now we'll look at all the variable parts. So the next thing I see is an x plus three. So I have an x plus three here, I have an x plus three here, and none in the other one. But I saw an x plus three, so I'm gonna write it down. And the highest power that it occurs is just the first power, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. Okay, next we have an x minus three, 
All right, so I definitely need to write that down. I don't have an x minus three in the next one, and I have an x minus three here. All right, so I have, saw an x minus three, so I'm gonna write it down. And the highest power that I saw it was a two. Okay, now what's left, I have an x squared and a y minus one squared, and they're by themselves, so I just need to sort of tack them on there, y minus one squared. And of course, we would probably write this as 6x squared, x plus 3, x minus 3 squared, y minus 1 squared, right? But this whole thing is my LCD, right? Okay, let's do one more example, and then we'll actually talk about how we can use this to add it, right? So this is the LCD. Okay, so part B, we have a 2A over and then in the bottom here it looks like we have a b times a 3a squared plus 12a plus 12 and then we have a negative 7b over an a times 4b squared minus 8b plus 4 and then here we have a 3 over an a b to the third plus 2b to the third Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll factor everything. So it looks like here I can take a three out, which is good, because then I'll have a three B and then A squared plus 12. Sorry, I need to factor a three out. So that's now four A plus four. All right, and of course we can know that that factors two numbers that multiply to four, but also add to four, that's a plus two, a plus two, or a plus two squared. Okay, now in the next one, we can factor out a uh, four, and then we'll be left with b squared minus two b plus one. All right, so if we factor that, this will be a four a, and then we need two numbers that multiply to one and add to negative two. So that's negative one, negative one. So that's a B minus one squared. Okay, and then in the last one, we'll have a B to the third that we could take out. And we'll be left with A plus two. Okay, so these are my three terms that are now factored completely. So now let's look at the LCD, all right? Well, again, my number part, I'm just gonna do separately. And if my numbers were three and four, then I would need a 12, okay? Now let's look at our single variables. I have a B and a B to the third. So since I saw a B, I'm gonna write it down. Highest power of B was third, all right? I also have an A sitting here, but there's no other A, but I'm definitely gonna need the A. I saw it, so I'm gonna write it down. Okay, then we have an a plus two squared, so I need to write an a plus two squared at least. And that's an a plus two, but the a plus two squared will of course cover that. Right, and then what's left over, the b minus one squared, so we need that too. So that's my LCD here. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now that we know how to talk about finding the LCD, that is a critical step in finding the LCD, okay? So whenever you wanna add or subtract rational expressions, the first thing that you need to do is to find the LCD, okay? Now once you've done that, you're going to look at your first fraction, all right? Now you need to multiply that fraction by something in order to make the denominator be the same as the LCD, all right? So whatever that denominator is missing, that's what you would need to multiply that numerator and denominator by, okay? And then, you're, of course, you're gonna do that for each fraction so that all your denominators are the same, and now you just add all of the terms in the top, all right? Now, you don't wanna multiply out the denominators, so there's sort of a last step here 
and that's to uh, factor the numerator if possible and cancel. And cancel if possible. Okay, so let's do some examples of that. So in part A, we have three over two xy minus four over x squared plus two over y squared. Okay, so first I need the LCD. All right, well, this will be a little bit easier than before. Let me just rewrite that. Two over y squared. Right, because now my number is two. The highest power of x that I have is x squared. Highest power of y that I have is y squared. So that's my LCD. And now we just need to multiply each fraction by whatever it's missing from the LCD. So for example, this fraction is missing a power of both x and y. So I need to multiply the top and bottom by x, y. The second fraction, I'm missing a two and I'm also missing a y squared. And then the third fraction, I'm missing a two and an x squared. Okay, so now we're gonna multiply all this out. So I'm gonna get a three xy over two x squared y squared minus a uh, eight y squared over an x squared, y squared times two, sorry. And then plus a four x squared over two x squared y squared. Now what we can do here is we can now just write this all over the same denominator and that's what I'm gonna do from now on, right? But anyway, we have a three xy minus eight y squared plus four x squared. Okay, so of course at this point, if we could factor this, we would, but in this case, there's no obvious way to factor this, so it looks like this is the best we can do. Okay, let's look at another example. So in part B, we have a two x over an x squared minus four plus one over x times x plus two minus one over x minus two. All right, so of course here we have to factor. So, and in fact, this one's the only one that we need to factor. This would just be x plus two, x minus two. So plus a one over x plus uh, times x uh, plus two, and then minus a one over x minus two. So first of all, the LCD, let's look at all of our factors here. It looks like we have an x to the first power. We also have an x plus two to the first power and an x minus two to the first power, right? And that's good because none of them appear uh, higher than that. So now we just need to multiply each fraction in, uh, we need to multiply each top and bottom of, top and bottom of each fraction um, <laughs> by something so that it matches uh, the LCD. So in this first one, I need to multiply top and bottom by x. In the second one, it looks like we're missing an x minus two. And in the third one, it looks like we're missing an x and an x plus two. Okay, so now this is all over x times x plus two, x minus two. And it looks like I'm gonna get a two x squared plus an x minus two. Right, if I multiply that by one, I just get plus x minus two. And now here we have to be careful because we get a minus x times x plus two. All right, so we have to be careful that we're distributing that negative in. So this is going to give us a two x squared plus x minus two minus x squared, right? If I do x times x, that's x squared plus two x, and then we need to apply that negative. So we get a minus x squared and a minus two x over x, x plus two, x minus two. So in the top, we'll get some cancellation. We'll get an x squared, because these two, 
and then we'll get a minus x and a minus two over x times x plus two, x minus two. So now we can factor the top as an x minus two, x plus one. So we will get some cancellation here. Of course, we'll be able to cancel the x minus twos and we'll get an x plus one over an x times x plus two. So that's our final answer for part B. Okay, now part C. It looks like we have a four R minus three over nine R to the third minus two R plus one over a four R squared plus two over three R. Okay, so first things first, everything's factored so we can go right to finding the LCD. So for my numbers, I have a three, oops, I have a three, a four, and a nine, all right? So it looks like uh, the best we can do here is a 36, I believe, all right? So it looks like for the numerical part, we have a 36. And then the highest power of R that we have is R to the third. All right, so that's simple enough. So now what does each one need? Top and bottom of this one needs a four. Top and bottom of this one needs a nine R. And the top and bottom of this one needs a 12 R squared. So it looks like we get a 16 R minus 12 minus, and I'll write this sort of this way first, minus nine R times two R plus one, just so we know we'll have to distribute that, plus 24 R squared. And this is all over our LCD of 36 R to the third. Okay, so now if I distribute this here, this would become a minus 18 R squared minus a nine R, right? That would take care of this. So now if we combine like terms, it looks like we're gonna have a six R squared, and then I'm going to have a plus seven R, and then a minus 12. And then over a 36 R to the third. Okay. So now let's see, is it possible to factor the top of that? Well, if we do a six times a negative 12, that's gonna give us a negative 72, okay? And now there are two numbers that multiply to negative 72 that add to a seven. Well, of course, yes, that would be what? So that would be nine. Oh, wait a minute, is that possible? Um, so let's see, so 72, we could do six and 12. We could do, what else we could do? So two and 36 obviously would not work. Could we do four and something? We could do four and so a four and an 18 would do that four times. So yeah, so, but that won't work. If we do five, that won't work. Six, could we do seven? Well, we could do eight times nine. So actually we can't factor this. Okay, so that's the best we can do. Okay. So that takes care of those. And that was, uh, yeah, that was the last one on that slide. Okay, so now the complicated ones that we looked at in the beginning are what I wanna add now. Um, and then we will we'll go ahead and uh, that will wrap up this video, all right? So let's just go ahead and we'll go back and we'll grab those LCDs so we don't have to do that work again. Okay, so let's select these two. Okay, and let's copy that and we'll bring it down here. Okay. Oops. Okay. 
So there's our LCD for the first one. Okay, and what is the first one? Well, we have y plus two, and then these factored forms where I believe we added two x plus three, x minus three. This would be a four y, let's see, and then over a three uh, x squared times an x plus three, and then plus a y plus one over x minus three squared times y minus one squared, right? So that's just redoing the work that we already did before. I don't wanna go through the slow derivation again, but that's what you would end up with. Okay, so now we need to obtain the LCD in each of these fractions, right? So in the first one, I need to multiply the top and bottom by, I need a three, I need an x squared, I need a power of x minus three, and I need a power of y minus one squared actually. So I need to multiply the top and bottom by that. Okay, so that takes care of the first one. In the second one, I need a two and I have an x squared, I have an x plus three, I need an x minus three squared and a y minus one squared. Okay, and then in the last one, we just need a six x squared times x plus three. Okay, so now if we multiply all this horrible junk out, the idea is that this is all now gonna be over six x squared, x plus three, x minus three squared, y minus one squared. Right, and we won't go through the entire simplification because that would take entirely too long and we'd sort of lose the point. Um, but the idea is that as long as you multiply by something that gets you the LCD, you're sort of good. So this would become an eight Y, X minus three squared, Y minus one squared, and then plus a six X squared, Y minus one, X plus three. Right, and we'll leave it this way for now. Right, you could distribute all that stuff out in the top and try and cancel stuff, uh, but we won't do that here. Okay, last but not least, part B. So it looks like we have a 2A over, and then this would become a 3B. And if we do that, we'll have a, I think this came out to be an A plus two squared. Right, and then this became a minus 7b over, and then a 4a, and then I think this was b minus one squared, and then plus a three over b to the third times a plus two. Okay, so again, the idea is that we can eventually write this all over 12b to the third, times a times a plus two squared times a b minus one squared. So now it's a matter of, well, what do we need to add into each one? So in the first fraction, we'll need a four, we'll need a b squared, we need an a, and we need a b minus one squared. So we need four b squared, a b minus one squared. In the second one, I need a 3b to the third, and I have an a, and I just need an a plus two squared. Okay, and then in the last one, we need a 12a, we need another a plus two, and we need a b minus one squared. Okay, so it looks like when we simplify all this, we're gonna get an eight A squared B squared, B minus one squared, and then a minus 21 B to the fourth um, times A plus two squared, and then plus a 36 A times A plus two 
b minus one squared. All right, and again, if you really wanted to, you could go through and simplify this, but for the purpose of this video, we won't do that. Okay, so that concludes this video on adding and subtracting rational expressions. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.